Hey, I'm Hunter from Scothrive, and in this video, I'll be creating this testimonial card using HTML and CSS. I'll be using Copen to write the code, and most of the default settings should be fine. However, I do have a CSS reset enabled, which will reset all the default CSS for browsers. That way, we can ensure that we're all starting from the same point no matter which browser we're using. Now, let's go ahead and start on the HTML. I'll be using semantic HTML elements when possible, so if any of the HTML elements are new to you, be sure to check out the video at the end of this one that covers the nine alternatives to the div tag. The first thing we'll do is create a divider and give it a class called container. This container actually isn't necessary for the testimonial itself, but it will add a height and a background color to our design because there's nothing else in our HTML to take up the rest of the space on the web page. Next, we'll create a section tag and give it a class called testimonials. This section tag is responsible for creating a container around all of our testimonials. Inside the section tag, we'll add an article tag and give it a class called testimonial. This article tag is the main container for each testimonial. The first thing we'll add inside the article is a figure tag, giving it a class called testimonial image. And inside this figure tag, we'll add an image of the person giving the testimonial. The source attribute, or the URL to where the image file exists, is just a link to an Unsplash image, which is a free stock photography website. Also, be sure to describe the image in the alt attribute to ensure your image is accessible. Below the closing figure tag, we'll add a new divider and give it a class called Testimonial Content. Then inside this new divider, we'll create a paragraph and give it a class called Testimonial Text, which is where the testimonial will be. And below this paragraph, we'll add one more paragraph, giving it a class called testimonial name, which is the name of the person giving the testimonial. To create the next testimonial, we'll just copy everything in the article tag and paste it below. Then all we need to do is change the content of the person's testimonial. Now that our HTML is done, we can go ahead and open up the CSS panel and start styling our testimonials. The first thing I need to do is go to fonts.google.com and select the fonts I want to use in my project. Once I have those fonts selected, I need to come down and select this code between this style tag, then come back to CodePen and paste that here at the top. Now we'll be able to use these fonts in our CSS. The first thing we'll do is style the container class. First, we'll add a height of 100 view height, which will take up the entire height of the web page we're currently on. Next, we'll add a background color of a light blue. We'll add some padding around the container. We'll set the container to use Flexbox, and because we're using Flexbox, we can set place items to center, which will center the testimonials vertically and horizontally on our divider. Next, we'll style the container holding the testimonials, which has the class of testimonials. We want to use Flexbox here as well, so we'll set display to Flex. Right now, the testimonials do not have a set width, so Flexbox is giving each one a width to fit the available space of the container. This will be an issue later when the testimonial can no longer fit inside the width of the container. So we need to set flex wrap to wrap in order to tell Flexbox to wrap the testimonial to the next line. Then when the testimonial wraps to the next line, we want to ensure the testimonials are horizontally centered to the div. So we'll set justify content to center. Last, we'll give two rem of spacing on the top and bottom for each testimonial by setting gap to two rem. Now let's go ahead and style each testimonial by targeting the testimonial class. We'll set the max width for the testimonial to 21.5 rem. Max width will force the testimonial to take that much space if possible, and then dynamically resize to fit if 21.5 rem is too big for its parent container. We'll use Flexbox inside the testimonial, but we'll set flex direction to column instead of the default, which is row. This will set the direction of the items in the testimonial to be placed from top to bottom instead of left to right. Last, we'll set align items to center, which will horizontally align all the items in the testimonial horizontally to one another. The next thing we want to do is style the testimonial content, which is the section of the design that holds the testimonial text and the person's name. First, set the text aligned to center, which will override the left aligned style. We'll give the content some space from the edge of the container by setting padding to 2 rem. Then we'll set the background color to white and round the edges of the container just a bit by setting border radius to 0.5 rem. To help separate the card from the background, we'll add a box shadow to the container. The first value represents the X offset, the second the Y offset, the third the blur, the fourth the spread, and the fifth the color. 
For the color, we're using HSLA, which allows us to set a color based on hue, saturation, lightness, and an alpha or opacity value. In this case, we're setting the shadow to black with a 10% opacity. The last thing we need to do is create the overlap effect with the testimonial image. To do that, we'll set the margin top to negative 2.5 rem, which is the radius of the profile image when it's styled later in the video. If you enjoyed the tutorial this far, be sure to give it a like to help others learn HTML and CSS as well. Now let's style the testimonial text. First, set the font family to the Noticia text that we imported from Google Fonts and set the fallback to the browser default serif font in case there's an issue loading the font. Set the font weight to 400 and style to italic. Set the font size to one rim and give the text some extra spacing by setting the line height to two, which is setting it to 200% or double the font size of one rim. Then set the color to the following hex code. Give the text some spacing from its siblings with a margin of three rim and zero, which sets the top and bottom to three rim and left and right to zero. The next four lines are going to set the limit of the testimonials to five lines. These lines use WebKit prefixes and properties, so if that's something you still need to learn about, be sure to check the links in the description. For whatever reason, you have to set display to WebKit box, which is the old way of using Flexbox before it was fully supported by browsers. The next line sets the orientation to vertical and the line clamp sets how many lines you want visible. Last, you have to set overflow to hidden to actually hide the text that extends past the line clamp. And despite using WebKit, this line clamp trick is almost completely supported by modern browsers. Now let's style the name text. First, set the font family to the Lato font that we imported from Google Fonts and set the fallback to the browser's default sans serif font in case there's an issue loading the font. Set the font weight to 700 to make the name bold and set the font size to 0.75 rem. To change the color of the name, set the color property to the following hex code. Next, set the text transform to uppercase and give each letter some extra spacing between one another by setting letter spacing to 0.05 rem. Let's start by styling the testimonial image class by giving it a width and height of 5 rem. Setting the border radius to 50% will make the element into a circle. And the last step is to set the position to relative for the pseudo element we'll create in the next step. It's a bit hard to see what we've created with these styles, so let's go ahead and right click on the preview and inspect the HTML. When we select a figure element with the testimonial image class, we can now see the styles applied a little easier. Now let's create the pseudo element, which will create an effect of a circle behind the profile image. I won't cover all the details about pseudo elements in this video, so check out the links in the description if you want to learn more. To start, we'll target the testimonial image class with the before pseudo selector. The first property we'll need to add is the content property, which we'll leave as an empty string. Next, go ahead and set the position to absolute because we'll be using absolute positioning to center the pseudo element later in the CSS. We want the element to take up the full width and height of the testimonial image, so set the height and width to 100%. The element will inherit the 50% border radius from the testimonial image class and will also apply a border around the element. The first value will set the border width, the second the border style, and the third the border color. To help the element stand out from the rest of the testimonial, add a box shadow just like you did with the testimonial content class. As you can see, the element isn't centered, so we'll center it using absolute positioning. Because we set the position to relative on the testimonial image class, the pseudo element will know what it needs to reference when centering itself. And to achieve centering with absolute positioning, we'll set the top and left to 50%, and set the transform property to translate negative 50% on the X and Y axis. Before setting the transform property, the element was positioned relative to the left top corner of the element. However, by setting transform to negative 50% on the X and Y axis, you're moving the element left 50% of its width and up 50% of its height, which will perfectly center it. The last CSS will apply styles to the actual image element inside the testimonial image class. Again, the image will take up the full width and height of its parent element and inherit the border radius. Last, set object fit to cover to get the image to fill its parent as intended. Check out this video if you want to see 9 alternatives to the div tag that you can start using to write better semantic HTML. And hit that like button and consider subscribing if you found this video helpful. Again, I'm Hunter from Skillthrive, and I'll see you in the next one.